I'm not sure I can follow that amazing uh, choir, uh, but I will do my best. Are y'all pumped? Okay, just want to make sure. Woo! Okay, uh, I'm going to start with a Navajo prayer. With your feet, I walk. I walk with your limbs. I carry forth your body. For me, your mind thinks. Your voice speaks for me. Beauty is before me. And beauty is behind me. Above and below me hovers the beautiful. I am surrounded by it. I am immersed in it. In my youth, I am aware of it. In my old age, I shall walk quietly the beautiful trail. Life is constantly a journey from every second to every minute to every hour to every day to every week to years passing us by to create a lifetime. It's the daily path that we walk, leaving our imprint on everyone that we come into contact with. We are all spiritual beings having a human experience. We are not humans having a spiritual experience. So every aspect of our life is a challenge, a blessing, a glimpse of love, a purpose, and a calling. It was a hot August day back in 1999, and I was driving my old white Volvo station wagon with the windows down, the breeze swirling around my face, as the air conditioning didn't work. I had my favorite REM album, Out of Time, blaring in my cassette player. Yeah, cassette player. Y'all remember those? Yeah, okay. I was sweating from head to toe wearing my tank top, cut off khaki shorts, and my worn out blue Birkenstocks, which apparently are back in style now. I had just left my hometown of Frankfort, Kentucky and was headed to Miami, Florida for a year of mission work with the Presbyterian Church. I was filled with all kinds of emotions, fear, excitement, sadness, freedom, and heavily meditating on the journey ahead of me. I had just recently revealed that I was gay to some family and friends and had for some time also felt called by God to become a Presbyterian pastor. The woman I had secretly been in love with for over two years had just told me one week earlier that she was also in love with me. That's some perfect timing. As losing my religion started playing on the cassette player, I laughed out loud with the irony of all these factors coming together at the same time. I knew that God loved me and accepted me, but wondered how I could possibly juggle being gay and becoming a pastor simultaneously in a foreign land. There must be some deeper meaning in this, I thought to myself, as a semi-truck almost ran me off the road and I slammed on my brakes. Marion Webster defines a calling or call as a strong inner impulse toward a particular course of action, especially when accompanied by conviction of divine influence. So what does it mean to be called? Everyone here probably has a different perception of what God is and very diverse personal religious perceptions on who God is. You may prefer to use the term universal source, the divine, nature, spirit, or God. I'm coming from a Christian background with a current spiritual and Buddhist perspective on life. So I will be using the term God. Every religion and spiritual practice has its own perception of what a calling is, too. A calling could happen during meditation, singing, walking, sleeping, or even during prayer. 
Since God comes to cultures and religions in various and unique ways, society then responds to the call through different reactions. In Christianity, hearing the call is associated with the Holy Spirit, which represents the supernatural effect that God has upon humans. In Buddhism, hearing the call would be to wake up to your own inner divinity or praying in silence to reach one's divine nature. The path to enlightenment is often through practice and development of morality, meditation, and wisdom. Some simply refer to the calling as the soul's urge, and others refer to it as the gifts that you were naturally born with. So not only can there be callings at various times in your life, but you might have one major calling, the reason that you're here for this human experience. Ask yourself, what can you offer the world? So, how does the call sound? Have y'all ever wondered that? I mean, if you think about it visually and literally, it could be an old rotary phone. You know, the kind that you had to like, ink, ink. Did anyone have one of those? Yeah. Okay. It could be a CB radio in a semi truck. Those are pretty awesome. It could be my personal favorite two paper cups connected by a string, right? Great way to communicate. Or it could be an announcement in a PA system in the store. Hello, I have a message for you, right? Or it could be a smartphone with a fancy ringtone. Maybe the call is simply a cardinal singing. The sun on your face, your best friend's hug, or child's laughter. Then how do you imagine the person on the other end of the call would sound? Maybe a deep man's voice, an angelic whisper, a cool British accent, a deceased relative's voice, or A special love called one's home. I invite you to close your eyes for a moment. Can you think of a time when you were called? What was the call about? What were you prompted to do? How did you react to the call? Were you listening? Did you hear the call? Remember the poem earlier about the bird singing outside the window. Maybe you have heard the call, but you ignored it. Maybe you heard the call, but you weren't sure what to do with it. Maybe you heard the call, but you were scared. Sometimes people don't hear the call or even ignore the call. But the call is always there. Please open your eyes. Sometimes you hear the call, but you simply want to ignore it or not listen. You know, that time when your cell phone rings and it's your Aunt Matilda, and you're like, I don't know, I'll have these t- oh my God, it's Aunt Matilda again. 
Why is she calling me? This is the fourth time she's called me today. You all know what I'm talking about? And what do you do? Silence it? Maybe you put it on vibrate? Maybe you text the person and say, I'll call you later. Right? We all have these times where we hear calls, and maybe we're just not ready to accept the call. Here is how I heard my first call. Ever since I was a little girl, I've been fascinated by the concept of God and different religions. I lived for Sunday school, hearing the stories from the Bible, singing hymns, and praying. This stable, kind environment and love from my church community got me through the rough patches in my childhood and adolescence and helped me become the person I am today. In high school, church youth group was my safe space. There, I learned how to love myself and to love and serve others through leadership and volunteering in my community. So naturally, it made sense that pastorship was something that I felt called to do for some time in my early 20s. I had been a youth director at several churches and was ready to serve God. I had read many books about religions and explored the concept of the soul and even reincarnation. Again, there was just one hiccup. I had become confident in my awareness that I was a lesbian, and I had committed to serving as a missionary with the Presbyterian Church for a year. In 1999, the Presbyterian Church did not allow gay pastors. In fact, I think it was about four or five years ago that they started allowing gay pastors. A calling is something that God, spirit, divine source, or nature places within us. Even within the Christian community, the concept of a divine call has often been misunderstood. Sometimes, the opportunity to understand the call of God can be confused with personal dreams or ambitions. But the purpose of the divine call is not something we create, but what God, spirit, or source places within us. The call doesn't have to come from outside of us. It's always there. A call or calling is what God has put in your heart to do. The work or service that you feel drawn and passionate about doing. It's how you connect to others. It's how you assist humanity. Take a water break. For example, when my mom, hey mom, (laughs) uh, was nine years old, she told her parents that she wanted to be a doctor. Now, I'm not going to tell you her age, okay? But her family just laughed at her. Because, as she likes to tell it, back then, if you were a woman, you could either be a teacher, a secretary, or a nurse. I think secretary was up there. Now, my mom has many gifts, as we talk about gifts. One of her gifts was not typing. So... Her family not only thought it was hysterical that she wanted to be a doctor, they also thought, oh, poor Amanda. She can't type. What, what is she going to do with the career? Right? Y'all, y'all know what I'm talking about? Yeah. So she ignored the disbelievers. She ignored people laughing at her. Her whole life, she was obsessed with medical terms, how the body works. She loved science classes. So she continued listening to the call, and she finished second in her med school class of 1968. 71. Close, close. Should have asked her in advance, but I kind of surprised her. Um, She was one of 100 students and how many women? 18 women and 100 students. The national average for women in med school at the time was nine. So she finished second in the class. She claims it could have been a close first, but the first was a male, right? 
Point being, she's now spent her entire life serving others as a physician. She not only followed her call, she also followed her soul urge. So what is motivating you to make change in the world? What is calling you? Historically, many Unitarians believed that the Trinity, the Holy Spirit, God, and Jesus, were really one. Your call comes from the Holy Spirit within you. We are all called. You might also wonder where do calls come from? Well, again, it may depend on your personal spiritual beliefs, but I personally believe that God, Spirit, and Universal Source speaks to us through our soul. You know, your intuition, where you just know something in your gut, right here, that's how you feel your call. You just know when you know. Callings can come in all forms, types, shapes, and at different times in your life. A calling can be in the moment, a simple, kind interaction with a stranger, a small yet significant task, or, like with my mom, it can be your entire career and lifetime of service to others. Calls often come when you least expect it. Just because we have a calling doesn't mean that they are ever easy to follow or that we're really ever ready to hear them. So what the call meant to me. My year in Miami was very difficult. I was in charge of a youth group at a local church in Miami Lakes, and I also did gang intervention within the local community. The goal was to get the youth off of the streets and out of trouble. In serving God that year, I lived a dual existence. I was out at home with my fellow missionaries. Imagine a reality TV show, kind of like the real world, right? Seven adults from different countries from all over the world with different backgrounds living in a small house together with a pool and a plethora of fruit trees. It's quite the experience. But then... I was back in the closet at church every day. People at the church just was sure that I had a boyfriend at home or that I was single. Meanwhile, I was dating my girlfriend long distance. The experience almost literally tore me in half, except for my work. I was serving the group of around 30 to 50 teenagers who just needed to know that someone cared. Teresa, one of the youth, was really struggling in the spring. She started missing youth group and acting out at school. Turned out that she was having a hard time figuring out how her sexuality and her faith in God could work together. She'd been attending the church for quite a number of years, and also her family were members. I knew that I had to be a positive role model for her and come out to the youth group and the pastor. I was terrified with fear. So a few weeks later, I did. The youth were so touched that I would share something so personal with them that it really didn't seem like it was a big deal. Part of my call in that moment was to share what was most vulnerable to me and to be honest to help another person. I had to love myself enough and trust in the loving kindness of the youth group that it would be okay. It turned out that while I thought I was helping the youth, they were really helping me. Through the process of revealing my true self to them, I was actually released of my dual life, my extreme guilt, my fear, and a total dislike of myself. 
Often, when you accept the call, you are rewarded in return in many unexpected ways. So while I accepted the call in Miami, and because of the youth and the pastor's unconditional love for me and forgiveness, I was set free. As with most callings, the experience gave me a way to bring more love to the world. Human connection is most important. Empathy heals, and that simply by hearing another person and being available to them, whoever they are, you spread love. Answering your call always takes a leap of faith. My calling wasn't a bird or a loud noise or a car horn. It was something that I had always felt inside of me. I used the gifts that God had given me to connect with others and answered that call. My challenge was to show God's enduring love and forgiveness not only to others, but really to myself. The call is not about success, fame, money, or competition. It's simply about holding space for others. Holding space means listening, respecting, loving, and allowing others to be their true selves. A judgment-free zone. My recent call. It started about six years ago in a dream. I woke up and had the thought, I should hike the El Camino. And I saw the path visually in my mind. Except, pretty, pretty funny actually, I had no idea what the El Camino was. None. I knew it was a car, you know those kind of funny looking cars? Mm -hmm. But I had no idea it was a trail in Spain. So, as we do with calls, right? I tossed the El Camino to the side. I thought, I don't have time. My, you know, I just had a baby. I, I can't go hike the El Camino. What, what are you talking about? So, then four years ago, the call or soul urge came back. Then I thought, okay, well, I'm going to have to Google what the El Camino is and see what it's all about. Obviously, now that you know a little bit about me, I was enthralled to find out that it's a spiritual pilgrimage. I thought, oh my God, I have always wanted to do a spiritual pilgrimage. So last fall, I started planning. And as happens when in, our, in our society where we all have callings and jobs that we may not make a lot of money, right? Everyone here feels that occasionally. I wasn't really sure that I actually had money to buy plane tickets to go to Spain. And the friend that I had planned to hike the, in the Pyrenees with wasn't sure she could afford the flight either. This is where the callings take faith, right? So I thought, universe, if you actually, my friend, tell me to hike the El Camino, I'm going to need a little help here. Y'all ever experienced that before? I, I need some help. So, actually, my friend is here today. So funny, um, my friend was going to her work Christmas party around, I don't know, it was mid-November or something, and we had talked about how we should fly into Paris and how we should probably maybe fly out of Madrid. But for some reason, we felt the call to fly into Paris. You see how these things connect, right? Um, so she's at her Christmas party, and she hears her name called. Apparently, she won the door prize at her Christmas party. And she's, like, asking her friend, what did I win? What did I win? Like a massage, a free restaurant, you know, gift certificate. And her friend is like, no, Abby, you won the round-trip tickets to Paris. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. And 
and four free nights in a hotel, which we enjoyed. Yeah, it's good times. Um, so when you have a calling, the universe or God will take care of you. Some of you probably have experienced this. When you decide to take the leap of faith and follow your call, things will work out. Things come together in ways that blow your mind, in ways that you can't even imagine, which I like to call synchronicity. So last month, I walked parts of the El Camino. It starts in the Pyrenees in France and then crosses the border into and goes across central Spain. Hence the necklace. El Camino means the way. It was the way of the Christians. But there are also many other spiritual pilgrimages in the world. The picture of the shell on your program is the symbol of the way. Although it was based originally on Christianity, the shell is also a symbol of spiritual pilgrimages because if you see, there's so many different paths. So you can think about it, which path is my way to God or which path is my way to my calling? Turns out historically they actually used the shell because originally the, the El Camino started at the coast uh, of France. We just kind of cheated a little bit by starting the Pyrenees. Um, and so they actually carried shells so that they could drink water. Um, you know, they just literally just wore their clothes, shoes or no shoes, and had a shell around their neck that they would drink water out of. The term pilgrimage is used allegorically to express the similarity between a journey to a holy place and human life itself via symbolic means of communication in which real action is merely apparent, meaning the physical effort required to reach the pilgrim's goal is interpreted as a metaphor for the human spiritual journey full of sacrifices and heartache, kind of like the human experience. Depending on one's particular belief system, the objective of pilgrimage is to reach the highest level of knowledge, spiritual renewal, and glory, to connect to the spirit and find fulfillment. This path, or the way, is present in most philosophies and religions. I could tell you stories about my journey on the El Camino, how it was really difficult to walk 20 miles a day, how my body hurt all the time, it was always uphill, but that would be a whole other sermon, maybe, maybe in the future. What I found out is the way is love. You don't need to travel to Spain to walk on a pilgrimage. Our daily human experience is a spiritual pilgrimage, one that requires great faith and love. We're all searching for our best selves, for loving connections, for community, and for the good in others. That is that your real way, or the path to love. In the Quaker tradition, they have a saying called, let your life speak. Let the highest truths and values guide everything you do. Your path will find you when you least expect it. Don't worry or be anxious over finding your calling or hearing the call. It'll come when it's time and when you're ready, and you'll know. Being called by God doesn't mean that you're special or righteous. It's really about doing small, often, not noticeable tasks while offering kindness to those around you. When we listen at a heart level, we will always be guided forward, forward in a way that serves us. We each have multiple or hundreds of callings in our lifetimes, some big and some small. God is one of us, 
Whatever belief system you have, God is in everyone we meet. We are all connected in some way. We have more in common with others than we have differences. We are all one through love. So I've had multiple callings in my life. Pastor, coach, youth director, outdoor educator, sport consultant, professor, and now children's book author. I've learned this firsthand. Although back in 1999, over 20 years ago, I thought that being a pastor was my calling. I mean, maybe it'll come back, you never know. But the current path that found me is actually professorship. I find it interesting right, that I stress in higher academia by simply empowering my students to be their best selves through kindness, mentorship, grace, if you've ever worked with college students, right? Forgiveness and love. I have followed my heart in various ways over my 44 years, and I've also suffered and had a rough time when I denied or delayed my soul's urges that arose in me. We are all on a life path or calling. Often we think we know where we're going and we make the plans, right? But in the end, our path actually finds us. So finally, how do you answer the call? Maybe you volunteer for a new community organization in need or donate money to a good cause, which I know everyone here does. Y'all are above and beyond this congregation. Or cook your sick neighbor some hot soup or call a friend in need. The response to a call doesn't have to be noble or heroic, simply spreading love to others. Often, the call is simply being you. Being your best, your best self is all that God wants. Spirit, universal source, it's all they need. Universalism means that God is so loving that he loves everyone. Unconditional love for others, and most importantly, unconditional love for yourself. I'm going to leave you with a quote. We are all instruments of God. You are the notes, and we are the flute. We are the mountains. You are the sounds coming down. We are the pawns and kings and rooks you set out on your board. We win or we lose. We are lions rolling and unrolling our flags. Your invisible wind carries us through the world. So your call today is to go out and spread love and kindness Like confetti. Thank you. Blessed be.